I see an ICF sign on the meeting tonight. Just hoping for regionalization. Yeah. Or, or cancellation of ICFs. All right, we will get started as we are a bit late on our start time. And we'll get a look at 11.7, Proposed Fire and Emergency Services Agreement with the City of Brooks Lane. So this is related to the item that we just previously dealt with, with the appointment of a Director of Emergency Management. With, again, Keith's retirement, there has been discussions underway with the City of Brooks uh, Fire Department about the possibility of having them oversee the service and what we have before council for consideration today is a draft agreement that would provide for that arrangement to be formalized. It would be somewhat similar to what we already have in place with corporate safety where we employ the staff members and the staff members involved provide service for both organizations. In this case what we're proposing is that it would be a city of Brooks uh, staff position that would be dedicated exclusively to looking after and overseeing the rural fire services. It really wouldn't change anything from the way the arrangement has worked in the past with um, an individual providing support and assistance to the rural departments. It's just whose payroll the individual would be on and it would provide for closer integration and um, coordination with the City of Brooks Fire Department as well. So a number of benefits that we see with, with that arrangement if Council's prepared to approve it. Thanks. <clears throat> Excuse me. Thanks, Lane. Questions? Council? No questions? Need a motion? Hubie is making... Motion for approve the agreement as submitted. Take it, option number one. No questions, all in favor of the motion opposed. The motion is carried to proceed. Recreation agreement with Division Bizano and Division 6, 11 8, also Lane. So this is a, a follow-up to the recently approved intermunicipal collaboration framework agreement with the town of Bassano. Uh, within that agreement, it references the fact that recreation would be provided on a joint basis with the county and the agreement that you have before you for consideration would formalize that arrangement. Uh, the agreement is similar in nature to that which is already in place with Duchess and Rosemary with the exception of board representation. In this case, the board members would be limited to members of council from the town of Bassano and the county of Newell. So if there's any questions, we can try and address those. Otherwise, the recommendation is that the agreement be approved. Clarence. So why don't we have at least a best guess what it's totally costing? The potential is for costs to increase above what they have been. The arrangement that is in place right now, there is a Division 6 Recreation Board. All rural residents and Councillor Christman is on that board. And the amount that is raised has been pegged at basically $100,000 for the past several years, with 50,000 of that going directly to the town of Bassano, and 50,000 is available for the board to distribute to organizations within the area. What's proposed with the new arrangement is that both the town and the county would each contribute $25,000 towards a fund that organizations would be able to apply for, so there would be that same pool of funds of $50,000, but the other item within this agreement is that there would be a 50-50 cost share on all recreation costs incurred for facilities within the town of Bassano. And without having a lot of, or the benefit of historical information on what those costs have been, we 
can't say with any firm degree uh, of certainty what what the amount would be that would be contributed under that arrangement unless Kevin has got some more detailed information from the town but I'm not sure that that's available yeah well I think for this year it's uh, it's about 175,000 our share is that what you're after So there's before it was a hundred and now it's once now it's one seventy five plus another twenty five no that's including the twenty five yeah because it was never funded the town only got a grant before and so the it wasn't based on a fifty fifty formula now it's it's based on the formula that we had discussed uh, originally and and so I don't anticipate it going to be going anywhere because capital's outside of this arrangement. It's, it, it has to be negotiated year by year. Um, so the pool is obviously the big um, eater of that money. So it, uh, but that's the numbers that we had for this year and it may change, but I don't think significantly. Other questions? Tracy? How many facilities are in Bizano? So I know the swimming pool, but what else is there? Yeah, I'm just going by the numbers that I recall when we had the ICF discussions, and I think there's the potential for 12 or 13 different facilities that, that get funded, funded through this from potentially golf course, curling rink, rink, uh, ball diamonds, um, Senior Hall, uh, there's a number of things that fall underneath the, yeah. Other questions? Lionel? Is the golf course uh, run by the, by the community or is it a separate? Well, the, I, I think the golf course is run separately, but it's still a recreation function that the town from time to time puts in to, so any recreation dollars that they expend, we pick up 50% of it. That's how it works. I think it's a similar setup to the arena where they have a, they have a board that looks after the golf, which is also the bowling alley. Yeah. Yeah, and the curling. It's a multiplex. All right. Any other questions on this? Otherwise, we need a motion, one way or another. Lionel. Lionel moves to approve the agreement as submitted. Any further discussion? All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. And is everyone here for one o'clock? Got everyone from the city? Yes? Okay. Well, let's go back on our agenda to item 9-1, which is a regional enhancement reserve funding request from the city of Brooks. And I don't know who's going to speak, but there's chairs up here, three chairs, and uh, can add a fourth one if, Russ, did you want to sit up? I just, just going to find it. It's item 9-1 on the agenda. <coughs> Excuse me. So there's two applications in our, our uh, package. The first one, I think, is for the Hort Main Pipeline. Okay? That's correct. And we'll do some introductions as well because I don't... 
um, know if everyone around our table knows all of our guests and vice versa. So I'm Molly Douglas and I represent the northern part of the, the county, the Jem, Finnegan, Duck Lake, Booney area of the county, one of the Booney areas. And uh, I get to chair the council meetings because I'm Reeve. Lionel. Uh, Lionel Jess from Division 10, which is north and east of Brooks. Anne Marie Phillipson, Patricia area. Good afternoon, Hubie Callan, Tilly area. Brian DeJong and I represent the area around Duchess. Good afternoon, Clarence Amulon, Rolling Hills. Kevin Stevenson, County Administrator. Hi there, Tracy Fife, Division 5, which is south and west around Brooks. Uh, Wayne Hammergan, Division 4, which is Scandia, Rainier, and Bow City. Ellen Anra, and I represent the countryside around the village of Rosemary. Irana Nielsen, Executive Assistant. Lane Johnson, the Director of Corporate Services. Sandra Stanway, Brooks Bulletin. Ian, we'll have you guys uh, introduce yourselves and take it away. I'm Alicia Bartlett. I am the new manager of planning and engineering for the city of Brooks. I'm Don Sari. I'm the manager of works and utilities for the city of Brooks. Hi, I'm back. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's Ross. Ross Standard, the manager of recreation and facility services. Uh, I'll let these guys go first. So. so Alicia, when did you start with the city? On Thursday last week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow, they've thrown you into the fire right away. Eh? They sure are. <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the county of Newell and, uh, and the city of Brooks, too, obviously. Thank you. Um, so we are here today to present um, our application for the regional enhancement funding for the, um, the Hort uh, main ex pipeline expansion. Um, in 2008 and 2018, the City of Brooks had their wastewater infrastructure master plan updated. And in that study, they found that um, during wet weather events, there are surcharging problems with the system. Um, the surcharging is causing environmental impacts, um, requiring the city to lease land around the pipeline uh, due to the environmental concerns. So uh, we would like to move forward with the, um, the pipeline and the total cost of the pipeline project is $3.4 million. And we are looking for 850,000 coming from the county grant. All right. Questions? Brian? So I recall the, when this, um, uh, and I was uh, wondering whether, I couldn't remember at that time if it included the, the, if Westland Acres was ever to be hooked up to the city system, if this was the route that it was taking. And so I'm just curious how much capacity there is in the system, because you say, in the description here, it says 20 years of growth in the city of Brooks. So I'm just curious the numbers, whether what that, what that additional 20 years would encompass just city of Brooks growth or if there was a community. Uh, Uh, that, this pipeline will, it, it's, it's, they say it's up to about 20 years of growth. Um, however, it depends on what type of growth as well. And I don't believe this, that, that study you're referring to, because we had a number of them done, refers to West Island Acres going through the city. I think it was to go around the city. Other questions? Yes, Ellen. So it also says um, that uh, Lake Newell Resort homes are going to be serviced as well. How many homes are there currently? Uh, 
Um, right now, we have 150 homes down at Lake Newell Resort. We have 248 residential lots plus the marina house that are tied onto the sewer system coming from the resort. The data that I have uh, from this is that uh, we're generating roughly 40,500 cubic meters per year of sewage being pumped to the city of Brooks uh, into their pipeline. And um, that's, that's the historical trend over the last four years that we've shared with the city. Just not that relevant to, to the request for funding and stuff, but council does have an agreement from 2003 with the city of Brooks when Lake Newell Resort first got tied in uh, with wastewater services. And uh, in that agreement through the developer, there was a plan for a total development of 700 units, one unit representing one residence, where there was a marina or a commercial development or something, they had calculations in their um, area structure plan to say what capacity those would take out uh, being not normal. And um, with that original agreement, there was some, some forecasts and stuff in there with 10 year horizons and stuff. I am aware that County Council did issue a check back in 2004 for $185,000 based on the 10 year forecast for improvements that were uh, suggested for the sewage collection treatment and disposal between the town and Lake Newell Resort. Um, I'm not sure where that went or, or what improvements have been done and then how as the question already asked if this is going to sustain the capacity of Lake Newell Resort and other areas around the city or not in your consideration of this. So what year did you say this thing, the uh, $185,000 was paid? That agreement was in 2003 and the check was cut February 25th of 2004. In advance of any improvements, that was right up off the hop. So, I know it's there's a mention in the information about 2008, and isn't it? Can I read that somewhere? I don't know who signed it. <laughs> you know as well as I do. Any more questions? Wayne, I've lost what I was looking for. Uh, so you've got no record at all how, of how that 185000 was spent? I wasn't in my capacity at that time. I no, don't have any records. There's no records. I don't have any records or reporting um, as to where that funding is at. Maybe it's still being uh, held in reserve for, for improvements as slated. I don't know. Would you guys know anything? No, you wouldn't know anything about that. Okay. Other questions? Anne-Marie. Um, this um, $850,000, how is that going to be handed over as the project is progressing? Or is it upfront all at once? Is it an installment based on invoices? And that would be a question to our, our guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure if there's any details on the request. I think typically what ends up happening for these is council approves them, then Matt cuts a check, but it can be any arrangement that will work for the city as well. Um, Marie? Um, well, and, and I was wondering about that because there is no really um, a plan in place that tells us exactly how much it's going to cost. I guess it's not tendered out yet. This is just an estimate that it's going to cost this much. Yeah, the project was tendered out. Yeah, it actually come in a little higher than 3.4. Yeah. I would like to note that um, downstream of that, where that pipeline is entering into a horticultural lift station, just a few years ago, we, we have put... Uh, over a million dollars into that lift station, upgrading it. And as well, uh, this year we're putting in another $125,000 into another upgrade onto that HVAC system in the lift station. So downstream of that pipe, there's, there's been 
well over a million dollars spent on that system there. Other questions? So these would be two separate projects that we need motions on for each, I believe. So it would be a one, one at a time motion for each of these then, Lane. So any other questions that people need to know the answers to? Clarence, you look like you're thinking. Well, you know, I think we have to remember how we, that these, these funds were, were allocated with probably just sort of a verbal restriction that they should benefit both city and county. And I don't know if I can remember anything else that we actually said at the time. Um, but that was kind of it. Um, the city has always been pretty cooperative with, with these types of things. They've come with good projects that we that have benefit both both municipalities, and I think this one certainly does. So I'm going to okay this one and make a motion. Thanks, Clarence. Questions? Anybody else? All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion is carried. So that's the Hort main pipeline expansion and so the daycare is the other one on the list. Thank you Alicia and Dawn. Thank you. And Russ. Yeah, they're just <laughs> I hope you weren't traveling together. <laughs> no, no, no we're not. Uh, I'm surprised I'm here talking about daycare. No, I'm just <laughs> But anyhow, so, so the reason I'm sitting in front of you is because the operator of the daycare that operates out of the JBS Canada Centre uh, had uh, approached us some time ago, uh, in large part because she has quite a large waiting list uh, in our 10-year uh, regional uh, extensive master plan and, and in other areas over the years, we've certainly identified as daycare being a needed asset to the community and something that we've been somewhat short on. Thought we helped that out when we and we did help it out when we uh, when we opened up the daycare with as part of the uh, JBS Canada Centre. They operate with 36 uh, kids currently at capacity, and an expansion of a uh, roughly a thousand square feet, 7.5 meters north of the daycare would improve that capacity to 60 people, uh, which she is saying she could fill right away. And so uh, that the city was approached. We've gone out and gotten uh, quotes. Uh, as to what the cost would be for that, and that's where this budget comes from. It hasn't been tendered at this point in time. So how, how long has that daycare been open? Uh, we opened, uh, the daycare opened March of 2017, yeah. And so it was uh, full immediately and basically is over full. Yeah, yeah, see initially we even had left open I think it was six spots for a drop-in type um, yes. capacity. Uh, we found that there wasn't, uh, it wasn't being used hardly at all, almost at all. And because of the waiting list, we actually opened up those spots in our agreement for them to have full time to the 36. And um, yeah, and so basically it's been at capacity with waiting lists since we opened. And uh, my understanding is from uh, that, that this is a need within the community as a whole. It's not just something just recent. Uh, uh, daycares are not having an issue with reaching their capacity. Hmm. So, yeah. <clears throat> Questions? Clarence. So, Russ, this, there's a fee to this. So how close are you to breaking even? Uh, so it would take us approximately uh, 10 to 13 years to recover it within the lease agreement itself, uh, the city, to recover that uh, full amount of the $202,000 bu uh, budget. That's got a 15% contingency in it as well, so I want to point that out. It may actually be savings of a little uh, less than that if everything comes in good. Uh, but uh, also, there was another... oh. 
The other thing with that is, is uh, this daycare and other daycares in town on a pretty regular basis use our facility in other capacities too. Come swimming, uh, use the field house and things like that. And so the more there are kids incorporated in this, there's also other recoveries. And that's why we don't really know it's a 10 to 13 because also lease agreements change over the years. Uh, we foresee a two to 5% increase at you know every three or so years so yeah so russ i'm just curious is is this going to be big enough or in two years from now are you going to be doing another add-on because that it, it opened so recently yeah so well it, it's quite a substantial increase she does she's pretty confident that she can fill it at this time um, I, I guess what I could answer is we could go as big as possible, but she's looked at this from a business staffing perspective as well. And at the same time, I guess you run the risk if you go too big uh, for them and then pull from other areas and daycares too, right? At some point in time, we've all, we're also trying to keep in mind the fact that there are other businesses operating in town with capacities of between 50 and 60. And so uh, we're a little careful as to how big that goes uh, but to answer your question from the operator themselves she feels she can get to this capacity she doesn't have the waiting list for that right now but she can get this this allows for a little bit of growth past what her uh, what her waiting list is okay. other questions motion Brian Brian will make the motion to approve this, support the daycare expansion funding request. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Thank you, Russ. Glad that it's uh, been a good thing to have as part of your facility there, or our facility. Russ, don't be pointing your finger at anybody anymore. <laughs> Okay, I think we are at 11.9, Municipal Community Generation Challenge. Lane. So this was a follow-up to previous discussions that have taken place with Council when we first brought this forward. It was with the plan to apply for funding under this program and hopefully direct that funding towards a successful application with the uh, landfill and the uh, concept of developing this uh, waste energy facility there. Um, Ray has indicated that the process that is being used to select a site for that facility is certainly not going to be completed in within the timelines required in order for this particular grant program to be tapped into. When we brought forward the original proposal, it was with the caveat that if the Sewa project didn't come together, we would be looking at trying to redirect it in another, um, in another area. And the discussions that we've had in an effort to follow through in that regard have included the City of Brooks and Medicine Hat College Brooks campus. Uh, the proposal is to partner with those other two public agencies and develop a site that would be out on the Brooks campus and uh, would actually complement some of the programming that the Medicine Hat College is already providing as well. Um, really, the, the objective, we've tried to identify the main objectives in, in the report there, but what we're hoping to do in proceeding with this project if Council agrees to move ahead and the application is actually approved, is to use that facility as an, a learning center, but it would also accomplish a couple of other things. It would generate renewable electricity. Um, there would be revenue that would come back from the sale of that electricity. But more importantly, we're hoping that the facility would provide an opportunity to make information readily available to other businesses, to farm producers, homeowners, 
on some of the benefits that they could expect to realize if they were to move ahead with the application of some of these technologies within their operation as well. Uh, one of the bigger overarching purposes that we're hoping this project would accomplish is it would serve as a um, help promote the, the Brooks Newell region as a hub for renewable energy. We feel that the location there adjacent to the Trans-Canada Highway on the Medicine Hat College campus is high profile. There's certainly lots of awareness with the elemental energy site directly across the highway and that corridor I think would would be quite conducive to helping to establish that image for the for the Brooks area. So we're wanting council to be aware that this is the direction that discussions are going with those other organizations. The next round that we need to meet is a submission for August 9th. If we're successful after that, then there would be additional work that would be required. But the request is at this point is that we be approved to proceed with that next round in the application process and submit a, a formal um, expression of interest to proceed for August 9th. Questions? Lane, um, how do you select these SME partners? I just, not that that's not yet, right? That needs to be in place prior to August 9th. Okay, it is. Okay. So yes, we don't have a lot of time. What we would need to do is go through an invitational process. We wouldn't have the luxury of being able to um, go through a 30-day advertised tender. We would literally have to go through the list of companies that would meet that qualification, approach them and say we're we're basically inviting you to submit a proposal on how your company would be able to facilitate this project if it was to receive funding approval. Uh, clearly there is a need to go through a process that allows for competition in the selection of a small to medium enterprise partner, but having that partner is indeed a requirement of the program. There's no getting around that. Are there local ones, like small to well, medium enterprises, funny term? Elemental would be a company that would certainly qualify. Okay. Canadian Solar would be one that we would be reaching out to. There is a company out of Medicine Hat that has done work with Medicine Hat College before. Oh, okay. um, CWL, which we've had some conversations with in the past and with council about as well, would be one that we would anticipate reaching out to. There's, there's probably at least a half a dozen that we would like to approach and have them submit proposals. Okay. And those proposals would be reviewed and an SME partner would have to be selected from those. All right, other questions? Brian. How long, how far along is the college in developing their, um, their cause they, aren't they developing a, developing a program um, to uh, within the college uh, realm of their faculty to to ed educate or, or provide education for a solar program or am I out to lunch no you're not they, they are moving ahead with that uh, how far along they are I'm, I'm not sure right now but it is something that they are definitely wanting to include as some of the courses that they offer so that full certification can be provided through the Medicine Hat College. Whether it's going to be in Brooks or in Medicine Hat, I don't know. Uh, another thing that has come up, Medicine Hat College has actually been approved for a grant from an organization in the U.S. that is making $100,000 U.S. available to the Brooks campus to establish a green energy classroom library facility. So they're hoping to tie that into it as well. Uh, the college as an organization is definitely taking a number of steps 
to enhance their ability as an organization to offer programs um, in the renewable energy sector. This certainly is consistent with the direction that they're wanting to take, but they are moving in the direction of offering a full certification program in their, um, in their curriculum. Clarence. There's one thing missing in all this, and those are, those are the numbers. Have you any idea what kind of dollars we, that we sh should be thinking about if we're going to go here? Very valid question. There is, the total funds that are available is $10 million, $3 million from Alberta Innovates, $7 million through MCCAC. They have indicated that that pool of funds is going to be allocated probably across a half a dozen projects, and it's possible that two projects might receive a significant amount of the funding. Um, so even if all of the money was to be allocated to one project, $10 million, there's an equity contribution that's required. 25% has to be kicked in by, by the agency that's receiving the funding. So if 10 million was approved, two and a half million would have to come from the partnership. Uh, we can't in our wildest dreams expect that the county is going to be receiving that amount. It would be nice if it was a s significant enough amount that we could go ahead with a, a reasonable project. Uh, even if it was $5 million, you're still looking at a million dollar equity contribution that has to be provided from the partnership. Land that is already held by one of the organizations can be part of that equity. Uh, it is possible that the college grant that they have received could also be an equity contribution as well. We're still exploring the size of the project that needs to be, that should be applied for. The size is going to determine the amount that would, the amount that would have to be raised, and that's going to drive the cost that has to be funded from the partners. Hopefully, some of the funds required would also be coming from the SME partner as well. If, mind you, if they're required to contribute up front, then the expectation is going to be that if there's revenue coming off of this, that they would then be entitled to a portion of the revenue coming off of it as a return on their capital investment. Lots of details that we've got to work through yet. At this point, um, what we're needing is approval to go ahead and continue those discussions and see if we can line everything up in time for that August 9th submission. Do you know of other uh, municipalities that are doing stuff on this program, Lane? Yes, there are. There are a number of others. Uh, the, the town of Picture Butte was at a meeting that, that I had attended. Uh, the town of Coaldale is looking at submitting a proposal. Uh, I was at a meeting yesterday, and there were other organizations that came to a meeting in Lethbridge that were from Calgary. Uh, there's a number of other municipalities that are definitely pursuing this as well. The MD of Tabor has actually got a proposal. Um, they're working with a, a private sector organization there. And what that group is looking at doing is developing or proposing to develop renewable energy facilities that would be placed on orphan well sites. So these are sites that are not being utilized otherwise. It's not viable agricultural land. And what they're proposing to do, instead of requiring the Orphan Well Association to go in there and do a full remediation on it, uh, that site would just be turned over to the organization. They would locate renewable energy facilities on there with the funding provided. So they're another municipality that is looking at doing something, but the MD itself is at somewhat arm's length. It is another organization that's trying to access the funds through the MD. Mm. So a fair amount of interest. And this program has, hasn't been cancelled or changed as of yet? 
that question has been raised a number of times. Is the money in the bank? And they keep saying, yes, the money has already cleared the government accounts. It is fully committed. Um, in order for it to be canceled, they would literally have to go in and scoop the funds out of the account that the, that the sort administrators like, have. Sort of like they just did to us. Yeah. <laughs> Almost. Yeah, that's interesting. Well, it's good. Good. All right. Going to proceed with this, Brian? Well, I, I see there's no motion, but I would like to offer my support for uh, continue investigating where it is. Um, we don't ask and we don't get, get the right... Uh, there's there's no ask for money at this point in time, and I think it's uh, it's an appropriate um, ask to to proceed with at least seeing where it falls out. Yes. So uh, that would be the first option to confirm intentions to proceed with round two in the MCGC program. Questions? All in favor of the motion? Opposed? Motion is carried. Thanks, Lane. Taking us to Councillor Payment Sheets, item 1111. From May, questions, motion? Tracy, move to approve. All in favor, opposed, motion is Carried. Checks for payment. Item 1112. Are there, is there a check in there somewhere? Ca uh, Clarence. I'd like to move that we pay ACON for their work on the two highways. Thank you. All in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Payment register. Any questions from the payment register? If not, a motion to accept the payment register. Anne Marie moves. All in favor? Opposed, motion is carried, and on to the municipal services. Oh, request for functions of council. Seeing none, I'll move to Mark's report, item 12-2. Okay, um, really it was extremely dry in June until we got some recent rains, and it's been significant amounts in some areas, and apparently it hasn't rained at all in some. Um, parts of the region, so it really differs from uh, where we are. Um, greater operators, they've done about 2.65 full rotations of, of road maintenance, and uh, they did uh, kick off working in the dust abatement program June 19th, which wrapped up um, just yesterday. Truck drivers, about 20% uh, completed with the resurfacing of gravel roads. I got the summary there as to what you can see is completed through the greater maintenance areas, so a little bit different than your electoral divisions where they overlap a bit, but uh, making decent and reasonable progress in that considering we do resurface gravel uh, areas where calcium is applied about one time every three years, so whatever is necessary to try to bind that material up and lock it together, it works, works better with calcium that way. So. Um, just a variety of assignments, keeping up with uh, sign maintenance work orders and stuff, about 19 posts, 21 sign replacements, um, cleaning up other vegetation and, and set soils around guardrails and stuff, keeping those free so that the airflow in winter and stuff doesn't create like a snow catch and, and uh, create problems around bridges and curves. Uh, drainage improvements with culvert replacements are in progress in the Bizano area, along with some other uh, locations. Shoulder pull program, they kicked that area off uh, here just the other day. They had their meeting on Monday and they're going to work. So I know that there's some local contractors uh, looking to get busy because there isn't a lot of work out there, especially with where the provincial government's at. So this is a warm welcome for them. Um, yeah, so calcium is done. So that's an update to that. 
and uh, we've been working on the new grader site for the Rainier Bull City Scandia territory. It's actually located over towards the water distribution center in the hamlet of, of Rainier, uh, removing it from private property and putting it in a fence compound with uh, its fuel tank and stuff. So slowly picking away at those to get them all relocated onto county land and, and off of private property. Uh, five new activations on the rural water side of things. I know uh, Cole had a little bit differing numbers uh, in there from what he reported, but that's what I have coming from the utility system. Uh, Highway 876 project, small update, not no update as I wrote, because I talked to Jeff after this, as he was tied up in other things. Fortis is getting work started uh, towards the north end of Highway 876, Patricia end. Uh, single phase power line up there, they're getting those poles relocated first and then they're gonna move south and work on the rest of it with an anticipated completion of mid-September. The uh, road contractor, uh, once the uh, single phase is relocated, they're gonna start at the north end uh, with the dirt work and stuff and, and start building that way south. So we'll see how uh, far they get and hopefully they can get all the dirt work done and that we're sitting in the spot that we want to for next year with gravel base and asphalt going down. So yeah, we're getting there. Uh, Jeff uh, also had been working with the EID and Alberta Transportation uh, with respect to a drainage complaint up at the uh, college actually. Uh, we've got some drainage that comes from Range Road 14-2 paralleling Highway 1 West uh, up to the college before it enters the Marshall Drain and things are backing up there. So we just got our uh, application approved by Alberta Transportation for the EID to go in and, and clean out uh, some of that drain for us and whatnot. So that's on the go. And partnership with the EID for drainage. Rainier South is in progress. Uh, they're gonna be uh, doing the North Rainier project as well. And we completed the scope of work for the Bow City area, which is uh, from the speed curve on Highway 539. That immediate area to the north and west of that speed curve is all gonna get cleaned up and taken care of there. Um, so looking like, I want to be uh, optimistic in this, but looking like we might be touching ourselves into Rosemary in 2020. Hopefully. Uh, I will reiterate, as I've, I've said in the past, that's probably a five to seven year program in Rosemary alone for as much as we have to do. Very flat land. So uh, we are making progress on that. And uh, Jeff has been busy working with uh, his new responsibilities and planning and development. And I think council can see progress uh, as things come through this meeting and stuff and hopefully see some other developments in that area. And uh, we're still waiting for Alberta Transportation's approval of Highway 875 South with the truck route parking in Rolling Hills. Uh, we haven't got anything back from that yet. Uh, when we do, we will move on that project as well. Uh, municipal enforcement conducting their, their business as they usually do. No issues or concerns from any partners and uh, they're keeping up with writing the warnings and the tickets as things warrant based off of 35 investigations for the month. And uh, yeah, we're getting ready to start dipping into budgeting for the next four year cycle and looking at things and getting prepared for our pre-budget meeting with council August 1st. So. Not sure we're gonna be bringing much, <laughs> but we're working on it. <laughs> um, the other thing with the report, I guess, the uh, permit statistics, you can see the permit activity is definitely higher than 2018. We're up about 12% uh, over previous year. And out of those statistics, uh, the number one move for the last, uh, last reporting period, 147 permits issued for service rigs. So that's 36% of that total permit number. Pump houses, light, light houses, mud tanks, dog houses, rig carriers, substructures, mud pumps uh, make up the majority of the rest of the top 10 off of those permits. So there is some activity. I mean, we see those fancy lights sticking up in the air now from the occasional drilling rig doing their, doing their business here. And I think most of that's related to Torxon and their business plans, so. There's a company out in our part of the world, North 40, that's doing some drilling we discovered too, oh. which is nice. It's yeah. pretty cool to see a drilling rig again. <laughs> <laughs> it used to just be everywhere. <laughs> Questions for Mark? <laughs> I wish. <coughs> I wish. <laughs> it's always on EID land, Kevin. 
<laughs> Perfect. No questions? Good. All right, let's Motion. move the municipal report. Please, somebody. Uh, Marie, all in favor? Opposed? Motion is carried. Mark, how the eight uh, greater divs work well? Uh, seem to be. The guys, the guys are happy with them. Um, following the rain events and stuff, we do bump them from eight hours a day up to 10 hours a day to try to take advantage of that moisture being in that surface and get the roads graded up and, and let traffic pack it down and try to hold it together and not create a bunch of washboard with dry material. Um, but it's easily handling the job. Yep. Yeah, the guys, the guys are getting around. Because um, did we have 12 at one time? We had 10. 10 oh, yeah. But there was always extra. Well, 10 since I've been here. So okay. maybe, maybe there were more, but we also had uh, a couple extra machines, and then we had other capable staff of going out as well. Yeah, that's what I um, recall, yeah. Yeah, so no, the, the eight are, are keeping busy on trying to keep the eight hours a day to keep the work-life balance at, at bay and keep the overtime to a minimum, but uh, we like to take advantage of the rain events in particular after this spring when we got moisture to try to get the roads graded and get the washboard cut out, so. Thank you. That's Good it. to go. Good yeah. to go, thank you. No post agenda items. Clarence, yeah. Just where's like we we did the maps of those the districts, and I was looking again at the one with seven, and I don't know if, if they're written in stone or not yet. But if they're not, I I'm kind of wondering why in the southeast corner there were I think there's four squares that always were in division one, and now have been pulled up to up to the Tilly area. I'm wondering why we wouldn't keep them in the same di division they were before, especially since that's lease land for most of the rolling hills and we get people from Bow Island coming up there and farming and there's nobody living in there. But um, I'm just wondering if that wouldn't be a more logical thing. I, I don't know as far as UB's concerned, but it seems to me it, it fit better with where they were before. East of Tilly is East of Tilly, and that's fine, but down that southeast corner, it's always kind of been with, with the Rolling Hills area. And I'm wondering if it wouldn't be more logical to keep it there. We can take a look at them again. Uh, for the most part, the alignment was based on trying to even out the population, but if it's in an area where there isn't any population, it shouldn't make any difference one way or the other. It's no man's land out there. I mean, there's, there's farming going on, there's lots of lease land, there's oil and gas, but no people. <laughs> we'll take a look at them again. That's an easy. No. no. Those to me are sort of uh, uh, a work in progress as we, if we notice something like that, certainly yeah. should be brought forward just to make it as best as possible. Well, it's less of a change, it's more, yeah. it keeps things. Yep. All right, uh, post agenda information, update on regionalization. Um, we have, Another meeting next week already, Clarence. <laughs> uh, I didn't bring anything on. I think there are approved. Do, do, and do, this, do our counselors get those? Or do we just forward them? Or how does that work? I can't even remember. Approved minutes or approved notes, that's from June, though, isn't it? June 4th. Okay, you, okay, so the, the notes from July 3rd should be coming out then, yeah. Anything else from, sure if you want, Kevin. So at the last meeting we, uh, we talked about the, the governance model and, um, 
the county put forward its recommendation of five, five, and one um, with the the um, Reaver mayor to be selected from within. The city's uh, preference is to have it externally uh, at large, and they're going to take that back to their council uh, and come back, whether this meeting or one of the future meetings anyway. The uh, ward system, there was very little discussion, support for that, I think. Um, they, they had more interest in what it looked like than, I think, uh, getting into the numbers of things. And the taxation model um, was discussed and uh, it's gonna come back uh, to another meeting. There was no firm dis dis decision on that. The only thing on the taxation model is the one that Sandy reported in the paper of 6.3 mils. Uh, was considered for about one second and it was thrown out pretty much unanimous that uh, nobody was had an interest in that type of a policy. So for the record, that's gone. I think it's safe to say, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it never was. Yeah. It never wasn't. Uh, communication assistance, uh, ISL Engineering has a, a, a portion of their company that does that so they uh, they are the ones that was selected that met the RFP uh, Tracy and Alan went through those and selected so we're looking forward we met with the two ladies and uh, looking forward uh, they did a SWOT analysis quickly so they're going to put sort of a plan together which is good I don't think it'll be ready for next meeting either um, we initiated a staffing committee we're, we're talking about potential impacts to to employees so um, I've sent an email internally to look at about eight members internally that uh, can make some recommendations to the committee on questions and answers. So the committee can either agree with answers or, or not. I think that'll shorten up. If we provide 100 questions to the committee to answer, it's gonna take forever to, to try to get through them because everybody has a different opinion. So we're gonna do ours internally here and then provide that. Um, so that'll start, that committee will start meeting after summer's done and then we'll, uh, we'll go through and, and uh, it'll engage the staff, um, you know, whether or not there's going to be enough for several months of meetings, I don't know. We'll have to see how it goes. We'll call for agendas. But I think um, aside from that, that's, that's about it. On our earlier discussions with regards to the loss of revenue, I think... Um, the county is evident the county is needing to find uh, savings more and more every year and we need to find another two million and it just keeps compounding so we're not outside of this scheme either and the other thing I wanted to talk about quickly is is a misconception that uh, the county being at the table and being able to be pulled away from the table and I want to reiterate that we can't be pulled away from the table. I, I understand that there's mentioned that Rosemary and Duchess aren't there. Well, Rosemary and Duchess don't have to be there because they don't have to negotiate with Brooks or Bassano. But we have to be there because we have to negotiate with everybody. And the ICF regulation, I'm just going to read a couple points in it so that we're all clear. It says, municipalities have a duty to act in good faith in the I ICF regulation. In creating, amending a framework, the parties must act honestly, respectfully, and reasonably, have a regard for the le legitimate interests of each party, have an appropriate communication approach, look for the potential for joint benefits of all parties, um, disclose to each other information that is necessary to understand a position or formulate in an intelligent response, Meet through representatives who are equipped and fully authorized to engage in rational discussion and put forward their positions. So those, those are some of the key parts of the regulation which we, that's the purpose that we're in this for. And um, the other thing I wanted to talk quickly about was the, the uh, request for a plebiscite um, that it seems to be out and, and my recommendation on that is again our municipality does not have jurisdiction over this but at the end of this process if there's a recommend, recommendation to move forward with that I would recommend that it may not be called the plebiscite but take it out to a vote to the county so that that information comes back but that information can't stop the process that we're in because we're would be outside of our 
uh, legislative responsibility. So I just want to make sure that's clear so that council knows as the people have misconceptions about you know what's happening why why we're at the table well we have to be at the table and unless we go outside of our legislative responsibility which i i wouldn't be comfortable with for sure amory well it's going to be interesting to see what the communication group is going to come up with because those headlines in the brooks bulletin are confusing and you know it's it's wrong information it makes it look like we already made up our minds and we're still in a, in a whole process that might take another year. And so somehow we have to get that word out that there is no decisions made. A plebiscite, a call for a plebiscite, what are you going to ask at this time in the process? Like what's the question going to be on the plebiscite? So I'm uh, looking forward to the communication. Did you say ISL was yeah. the company? Thanks, Samari. I just want to let council know that I've had several members in my division request a meeting and I've arranged to have one on August 7th and some of the things I'm hearing from them are it's amazing the misinformation is out there and some of this misinformation is deliberate I know it is so I'm going to have the meeting. I've asked Kevin if he can attend because he knows the number. And just to put some of these people at rest, I had one, one ratepayer phone me this morning just mad. She's, they read the, the Facebook. And I says, no, it's all bullshit, what they're saying on there. And I'm sorry, I won't pull my punches on this. I'm getting tired of these guys coming with misinformation just to stir up trouble. And we're not even close to doing any of this stuff that they're talking about. So this is what basically I'm going to tell them at this meeting, that calm down. We're not going to be doing anything until you know exactly what we're doing. So I just wanted to let you know this meeting will be coming up. So. Good plan, Lee. Anything else? All right. Uh, community events and camera. I guess we can adjourn mm -hmm. at mm, like 1.50. 1.50. Adjourn. Um, this morning we had a um, road closure and we never did make a motion to proceed, which we usually do. So I just wondered about that one. And um, the tax refund in this list, did we approve that too as part of our um, register or was that separate? The big tax refund? Yeah, tax refunds. It's under um, 11, I don't know my glasses, 1113. 1113 is payment register and then payment register for council and then it has a tax refund register. So it's just the usual mistakes. Somehow my... Yeah, the, the tax refund register would just be the same as, yeah, as checks for or payments. The, the usual yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's just that they've separated it out. Yeah. And the, this morning as the motion, um, you're probably, yeah, right. As long as they go ahead and... It, it's coming back, so it's not a big deal, but right. usually we make a motion to, to, uh, yeah, to proceed. proceed. Yeah, thank you, Amory. Anything else now that the meeting's over? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.